All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about five cheat codes or five hacks, I guess you could say, about home brewing. Uh, basically, I'm going to give you five different techniques in this video that are going to help you make better beer a bit easier and probably are going to help out a lot if you don't happen to have top of the line equipment or you don't happen to have the best space available um, or even if you're just starting out in your brewing journey. Also, if you are well advanced in your home brewing journey, you may still be able to benefit from some of this information. If it's your first time here, I just want to welcome you to the channel. Uh, normally, I do a grain to glass video every other week uh, where I take a beer all the way from the recipe stage through the brew through the fermentation through to the final tasting all in a single video however as much as i can i try to do some shorter more informative videos like this one sprinkled throughout the mix uh, so if you like that sort of thing please hit the like button and subscribe as well for more of this type of content all right so cheap code number one is going to help you a lot with preserving the hop character and hop aroma of your ipas or your pale ales or your pale lagers anything that has really a very oxygen sensitive character and that is ascorbic acid Ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, is a very easy and simple way to improve your beer's resistance to oxidation. After primary fermentation is complete, if your beer is exposed to oxygen, especially if it's a hoppy beer, and most especially if it's a New England IPA, it ends up being very detrimental to the flavor, can mute the hop character, can turn the beer ugly shades of brown or, uh, or purple even, and can just generally ruin the beer's character. So in most cases, it's generally best to avoid this by either doing a closed transfer or oxygen-free dry hopping as much as possible. However, there are definitely some times where that's just not going to happen necessarily completely oxygen-free. So what you can do to scrub that last little bit of oxygen out of your beer, even if it is past fermentation, is by adding a little bit of ascorbic acid. And now this is a technique that is popularized by Genus Brewing for good reason. It is a very effective technique that I have used many times myself. So I've gone and done the research on this myself before. Um, I'm not a biochemist, so I don't claim to know all the answers here. But the consensus is that generally, if you add the ascorbic acid to the mash, what it does is cut down on what are called reactive oxygen species. Essentially, those are chemicals that make your beer more susceptible to oxidation down the road. So by cutting down on those during the mash, you actually kind of give yourself a little bit of a buffer there. Ascorbic acid does not generally affect the pH of the mash in any significant significant way, especially in the quantities that you add it, which is about three to five grams total for the entire mash. A lot of people like to cite a study that says that adding ascorbic acid into your mash will create peroxides, which are actually super oxidizers and basically have the uh, opposite of the intended effect. Now that is based on a study that was done in wine, which has completely different chemistry than beer does. And long story short, you don't get the same effect in beer. You're not going to create peroxides. Um, now, if you are concerned about this in any way, you could still use your ascorbic acid effectively when you add it in with a dry hopping addition later on. If you're concerned about any of the things that I just mentioned and you don't believe me, which is totally fine and reasonable, um, then just add it in with your dry hopping addition and that will scrub out any oxygen that's in the fermenter uh, just as effectively. Cheat code number two is doing lagers at room temperature, and that has everything to do with yeast selection. And I want to talk about two yeasts in particular. The first one is called Lutra Kvike. Lutra is an isolated strain of quike yeast that is extremely effective at fermenting very, very clean beers at room temperature or even hotter. So if you don't happen to have temperature controlled uh, facilities for fermenting your beer in, you don't happen to have a fermentation fridge or any sort of uh, external temperature control coil or anything like that, just use Lutra when you're making your lagers, and they'll come out squeaky clean. I'm about to make an American Light Lager with this yeast in a few days, so once that video is complete, I'll pop it up here in the corner if you want to see how it works. If you don't want to use Quike, another option for you is Saf Lager W3470, which is the Weinstefan strain of uh, lager yeast. The strain is also sold as Imperial Global and Y-Yeast 2124 Bohemian Lager. Uh, both of these are going to do the same thing. This strain is very, very good at fermenting clean during high temperatures as well. You can still ferment very well with it around the 50 degree lagering temperature range. However, don't be afraid to push this up into the mid 60s. You will get just as clean of a beer and the yeast will go absolutely crazy and will ferment your beer out in probably like three to four days. I've used it for high temperature lagers twice now and they've come out super, super clean. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna link another video up here where you can check out the effects of using that yeast. Cheat code number three is going to be the cheapest, most readily available stainless steel unitank you can find, and that is a corny keg. That's right. If you get yourself a six gallon corny keg, you can ferment a full five gallon batch of beer 
in a stainless steel pressure capable fermenter. And if you're feeling up to it, you can also serve out of the same vessel as if it was a unitank. I'm gonna link my favorite brand of corny kegs in the description, but you can also find them used for significantly cheaper for about 50 to 60 bucks, and that's generally a pretty good deal. Stainless steel fermentation is awesome because it is super easy to clean, it's very sanitary, all you have to do to sanitize it is pour boiling water into it, and also it doesn't scratch like plastic does, it's much more durable, it can withstand pressure, so you can carbonate in the same vessel or you can pressure ferment in the in the keg as well. Cheat code number four is going to be for an oxygen-free dry hop on a budget, and that is gonna be using neodymium rare earth magnets. Um, this is something that you guys have seen me talk about many, many times, and the reason why I do is because it's very effective and very easy. All you have to do for an oxygen-free dry hop is on the day uh, that you actually pitch your yeast, go ahead and put your dry hopping addition in a hop bag, put a stainless steel object inside of it that you can sanitize, then take that whole assembly, put it underneath your bucket lid or on the side of your keg fermenter or somewhere above the wort, basically, and pin it in place with a stack of neodymium rare earth magnets. A lot of people ask me what I recommend uh, for these magnets, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link in the description to uh, the ones that I use. Usually a stack of about five or six of these is enough to hold many ounces of hops uh, up above the wort, provided you have at least another magnet on the bottom or something that's magnetic and rust proof. Cheat code number five is something that I have not actually personally done before. However, it is something that is uh, widely talked about in the home brewing community. And that goes for you guys who are brewing smaller batches or who are using uh, a brew in a bag technique and are using um, just a basic pot or something like that to do your mashes in. Uh, and you don't have any sort of recirculation system or all-in-one electric boiling system or whatever. Uh, and you're struggling to keep your mash temperature consistent. Well, a sous vide stick is actually a great solution to keeping your mash temperature consistent. It's not really gonna have enough power to really uh, change your mash temperature quickly. However, once you get it to the temperature that you want it at, you can stick a sous vide stick in there, put it at the right temperature, and it will actually keep your mash at that temperature very effectively. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it to step mash with, and I definitely wouldn't recommend using it to try and boil with, but it will work very well to keep your mash in circulation and uh, will keep your temperature consistent over time. Let me know what your favorite cheat code or hack or whatever is for home brewing. Put it in the comment section down below and I'd love to talk with you guys about it. And of course, as always, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, check out the description box for most of my other home brewing gear that I really recommend and enjoy, uh, as well as the ones that I mentioned here in this video. You can also find me on a couple other uh, places on social media. I'm on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer and I also have a Patreon which is in the description box as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.